Alright guys, hallelujah, it is a rainy day, a rainy day here in paradise, it is about goddamn time we get some rain here in the drought plagued Finger Lakes of New York here on this gloomy Monday, June 12th, 2023, so uh, couple of things that I want to uh, ran out. I guess I'll just make this two separate videos so uh, you know I was up at my Amish friends I am uh, killing another hemlock table hemlock table I'm killing another hemlock tree so I can make a new table for my uh, community kitchen at my vacation retreat center at Bugs in a Jar Farm. So anyway, I'm, I'm up there and uh, hanging out with the uh, with the 18 year old kid. Uh, he and I, it's just the two of us. So you know, Daddy and Mama aren't around. So it's just the two of us, and we're out there in the barn. Uh, measuring wood and all and figuring out uh, how to make this table y you know and he's uh, and, and he's got his gas powered uh, two gas powered chainsaws right there then of course the whole sawmill is, is uh, run by fossil fuels I, I mean uh, I, I've counted at least three tractors that they have forklifts, a giant propane tank, on and on and on. So they run a, an organic farm is what it's called. They have a big sign anyway that they're an organic farm and they have more fossil fuels on that farm than it probably pretty much if you added up my entire life uh, for 63 years uh, that one family of Amish people, uh, you know, going through uh, all of those fossil fuels. And then, of course, they have not one but two buggies. You know, the black horse-drawn carriages. There they have a carriage barn, uh, which all it does is, is store their uh, carriages that whenever they want to, you know, like go anywhere. Uh, they hook up their horses to this carriage and they go trotting off to wherever Amish people go, trotting off to in their, in, in their carriages, you know, leaving uh, all of their fossil fueled uh, organic farm uh, behind. And they also travel very frequently. They go back and forth to Ohio. I know that they're not uh, taking a horse and buggy to Ohio because they will leave on Friday and they'll come back on Monday. That's where they are this weekend. Uh, that's why we had to get this order in. So they're on their way back from Ohio. I'm assuming not in a horse-drawn carriage. So finally, you know, I, I didn't want to embarrass uh, the, the whole family or put any ideas in the little kids' uh, heads, but you know, so it was just me and him. And, and, and I said, brother, I, I said, I am not judging. I, I am not uh, making fun of anybody here. I said, I am simply curious what the hell is going on here and, and he goes uh, you know so what do you mean and I, and I said well brother I, I said look around us at all of these fossil fuels uh, I said my god how many uh, you know they have a big old like 200 gallon diesel tank uh, right next to their propane tank uh, I said I've never seen so many fossil fuels in one place in my life and he looks at me with this like like this confused expression on his face and he goes well it goes it takes a lot of fossil fuels to run a farm 
which is the identical quote that his uh, kid brother told me last year. It takes a lot of fossil fuels to run a farm. And I said, I am not uh, questioning that. Uh, I said, I realize uh, that you would not have this sawmill if it weren't for these fossil fuels. I said, but the question I have, I said, you obviously, I said, I, said, I want to make it clear for the record that, it, that at least you and I assume other Amish people that you know, because I know two other Amish uh, families that also use fossil fuels. I, I, I said, I just want to get it clear for the record. And I said, do the Amish have some sort of uh, religious, moral uh, problem with fossil fuels? And he looked at me, you know, and said, no, uh, we have no problem with fossil fuels. And I also might add, though, that not necessarily with this family, I know uh, that there's plenty of Amish people who, who lease their land out to frackers. The Amish in Pennsylvania, they lease their lands out to frackers. And there's plenty of Amish people who grow GMO corn that they don't have any uh, problem with GMOs, uh, with fracking, and I was under the misimpression that they did not use uh, natural gas. Uh, obviously, the joke was on me, and so I, I, I said, you know, what gives with the horse and buggy? I said, when you deliver wood to my house, you deliver it on that big old fossil fuel driven John Deere tractor. Uh, I, I said clearly uh, you don't have a problem uh, delivering uh, supplies and, and, and working out in the woods uh, with, with fossil fuel machinery. And I said so what is going on with, uh, with this horse and buggy stuff? Uh, I said, I, I, I'm truly mystified. And he, so he looks at me and he kind of smiles and he goes, well, Sam, he goes, when, when we bring you a load of wood on that tractor, he goes, how fast do you think we're going? And, and I said, I, I said, I don't know, 10 miles an hour. And he goes, exactly. We're going 10 miles an hour. And uh, I said, okay. And I say, so now you're going to tell me in the horse and buggy, you're going 10 miles an hour. And he goes, exactly. That, that was supposed to explain it. I still had, uh, you know, I felt like, uh, you know, that Abbott and Costello, who's on first routine. I had no idea what this kid was talking about that they're fine with fossil fuels that go 10 miles an hour and they're fine with a horse and buggy that goes 10 miles an hour and I said well what's the difference between that and my truck and he goes and he goes I'm gonna take a guess that your truck could go 80 miles an hour and I said I guess that truck could go 100 miles an hour and he goes well that's it and I said, what's it? He goes, it keeps the kids, including himself, on the farm. I said, what are you talking about? And he goes, uh, and, and, and he goes, Sam, he goes, you've been to Ithaca. <laughs> and I, I said, yeah, I have been to Ithaca. He goes, you know what goes on in Ithaca, that's what he told me. You know, you know Ithaca, New York, the uh, the home of Cornell University. Uh, you know, Sin City. Uh, and I and I said, yeah, I know what goes on in Ithaca, and I know what goes on in downtown San Francisco and in L.A. Uh, also. Uh, and, and he goes, well, so now you know that it is. He goes. If, uh, it, if, if there was a car sitting here, uh, I could jump in it and be in Ithaca in 20 minutes.
And I said, so you're telling me the reason that Amish people do not have cars has nothing to do with fossil fuels, but with the fact that uh, kids such as yourself could hop in the car and, and be sinning uh, within 20 minutes, and he goes, that's it. So there you go, I, I was utterly shocked. And, uh, and I said to him, I, I, you know, I, I said, would pretty much any Amish person that I meet having this conversation, would they answer that question the same way you answered it? And he goes, you got to understand, he, he says there's 15 different varieties of Amish people, I guess they're depending on how conservative they are. And uh, he goes, now my family, we're at the very conservative end. Uh, I don't think he used the word conservative, I don't know, but, but you know, that's what he was talking about, that they are on the stricter end of the Amish spectrum. And uh, he, he goes, but, so he goes, I can only speak uh, you know, for my family and the church that I am in. Uh, but that is the reason, and he had no reason to doubt that uh, that's the reason any other Amish person. And so then we got in the conversation, you know, since he's 18, about this, uh, you, you know, I've heard my whole life that when uh, Amish kids are, you know, his age, they get to go out in the world for two out for two hours. There you go. For two years, they get to clock out of the church and go and just uh, sample what life is like outside of the Amish community. And then uh, I think it's two years. And then at the end of that time, they can decide whether they want to return back to the bosom of the Amish uh, of the Amish church and Amish community or whether they just want to say no thank you I'm gonna stick with all the sin and and global industrial civilization and the internet porno and uh, being able to have sex and uh, drink and smoke weed and, and all of the things that normal uh, that, that any 18 year old would enjoy doing and uh, so again he goes well that gets back to this 15 uh, different brands of Amish people uh, he goes some of them uh, on the looser end uh, you know of the spectrum uh, that's true for them he goes but absolutely not uh, for you know, for my family, that, you know, he's uh, 18 years old, uh, he goes, if I make the decision to walk off of this farm and move to Ithaca and, and uh, you, you know, do what they do, I guess, in Ithaca, he goes, I won't be coming back, that it'll be a one-way trip. And, uh... I said, well, does that ever, does that decision ever weigh on you? And he assured me it did not, that uh, <clears throat> he had no intention whatsoever of leaving. And uh, so I said, so you're, uh, I, I, so you're planning to get married at some point? And he goes, you know, I can get married when I'm 19. So I'm just in a few months that you know that that he's going to live in his in his house right up to his wedding day of course be a virgin uh on his wedding night and uh and then he's going to get married and they're going to do whatever I, I don't know what two 19 year old amish people would do in this kind of real estate market he didn't seem like he'd really thought through with that 
so uh, that, that is real good looking very good looking smart young man I, I mean I said well do you have any contenders and, and he goes I have nobody to uh, that I'm looking at and I said well I, I said I know the feeling I said I thought a good looking smart young man such as I, I said I thought you would have a line of these uh, Amish girls just waiting around for you to hit 19 and he laughed and uh, said uh, well show me some because I don't see any and uh, that was that so that is the great mystery of why Amish people uh, <clears throat> at least that family uh, do not drive cars it has nothing to do with fossil fuels it has to do with sin sex in the city is what it's all about keeping the kids on the farm and away from us normal naked apes with our uh, chimpanzee bonobo instincts and uh, I will uh, come back and uh, tell you uh, so at some point I'll tell you about my latest Airbnb guest from Israel who uh, has been here the past two nights uh, <laughs> he was quite the character so I will uh, share that story another rant another day right now it is time to go do my laundry on this rainy day uh, this is the first time I have washed clothes second sheet washing first time I have washed my clothes <clears throat> since leaving Sandy's house a month ago get out there and enjoy your washer and dryer while you still can on this rainy day in the end times Bye guys.